Hello family and friends, I'm Susan and welcome to my home. Hey everybody, it's Susan here and today we're going to do some meatloaf and not just some ordinary meatloaves, some meatloaf so good it'll make you kiss your mama. I'll show you how to make it. It's easy. The cooking time takes longer than the putting together, that's for sure. But ponytail's already up. Let's get to cooking. Okay, everybody, let's get ready to put together some meatloaf. Um, this is my recipe I came up with years ago. It is so good. I mean, I've been making this for probably 15 plus years, but it is so good. Let's get it together. Two pounds of hamburger meat, which I just defrosted both these hamburger meat. You need one packet of Lipton onion soup mix. I actually like the beef onion soup mix if you can find it. If you can't, Get the onion soup mix and add your little bit of beef bouillon in it or beef bouillon base in it. Either way, it'll be great. I need half a cup of onions sauteed, which we're about to saute them. I need probably four or five tablespoons of ketchup. We'll see how much I need. And here's the secret. Instead of crackers, I use cornbread stuffing. Does it matter which cornbread stuffing? No, not really, but I use cornbread stuffing. And then, of course, two eggs to go with that. But first thing I'm going to do is saute the onions up, and then we'll get everything mixed up because you want the onions to be cooled off when you put it in the meat. You don't want it to cook the meat. So let's go ahead and get that started. And before I start the onion sauteing, I am going to go ahead and put the oven on 350 to let it preheat. And then we're going to get the onions sauteing. Like I said, that's half a cup chopped. The reason I saute my onions before I put them in the meatloaf is so they will be softer and a little bit sweeter. These are Vidalia onions. And of course, whenever you saute Vidalia onions, they get a little bit sweeter and it just tastes really good in the meatloaf whenever they are a little sweeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and saute these up. Then we'll come back and we'll start putting everything together in the meatloaf. And the onions are just about through sauteing. Whenever you say saute, I don't mean that you need to get them all the way down to where they're limp. Just whenever they're starting to go a little bit opaque. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see, they're shiny. They look extremely shiny. And that's what I'm talking about. Just enough to get the sweetness to start coming out of it. Now I'm going to turn this off, take it off the heat, and let it cool down for just a few minutes before I put it into the meatloaf itself. Now it's time to add everything to the mixture. I'm just going to basically use my hands to mix. It just seems to be the best way to go about it. Now I'm just basically pulling the meat apart. I'm not trying to overwork it in any shape, form, or fashion. So we've got that. The next thing is the sautéed onions. I'll go ahead and put those in. They've cooled off a little bit. I put them in a plate. So those are ready to go. And I'm basically going to kind of fold those in. Make sure I get them well distributed within the mixture. So we've got that going on. Now the next thing is the onion soup packet. Okay. And of course that is the onion soup packet. Now what I did is I got a teaspoon of the better than bouillon or better than beef bouillon. I put a little bit of water in it so it would make it more liquefied. Since I could not find the uh, beef onion soup mix, and now I'm going to basically get all this into there because that beef flavor is what makes it really tasty. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mix that up. And it smells amazing already. And I haven't even got halfway there. Okay. And you can see the brown is kind of distributing itself through the meat also. Now the next thing I'm going to put in is the stuffing mix. For two pounds of hamburger and everything else I put in, one whole packet of the, of the cornbread stuffing mix is what you'll use. I know it looks like a lot, but trust me, it'll all get absorbed by the time we add the eggs and the ketchup. And now I'm basically going to mix, put all this and let this get distributed through the meat also. And then whenever you see that it's pretty much picked up all of the crumbs off the bottom, you know it's ready for the next item, which it's pretty much absorbed it. 
The next thing I'm going to add are the two eggs. And here are the two eggs that I have basically scrambled. I'm going to add that to the mixture. And then I'm also going to add in the ketchup. I'm going to go ahead and start with about three tablespoons and we'll see how many I need. There's one, two, three. Now we'll see how many I need depending on how moist it looks or how much more moisture I need. And I'm just going to basically mix it all together again. Make sure that the egg really gets distributed within the meat. And it's very moist right now, which is awesome. Try not to over mix it. That's why I've been kind of folding it as best I could. Okay. Here's the container I'm going to be actually putting the meatloaf in. And what first thing I need to do is put some ketchup in the bottom of it because I don't want it sticking to the bottom. Just like marinara sauce or spaghetti sauce in the bottom of a lasagna, it helps to get it to where it'll come across or come apart from the pan easily whenever it's done cooking. So I've got that all there. Now let me go ahead and lift my meatloaf and put it in there. Okay. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of ketchup on the top because we're actually going to cover it and let it cook for the first 30 minutes. We're going to cover this and let this cook for the first 30 minutes. And then I'll take the cover off and let it cook the rest of the time. And I may add some more ketchup to the top depending on what it looks like after the 30 minutes. But it needs to cook for an hour all total in the oven. So let's go ahead and get that put in the oven. And now we'll set a timer for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes since we put this in. I'm going to go ahead and uncover it. As you can see, it's been cooking. It still is nowhere near where it needs to be. Going to put it back in for another 30 minutes, and we'll see how everything looks. And put some more ketchup on top and let it brown up. It's only been 20 minutes, but we're going to go ahead and put a glaze of ketchup on the top. And use a spoon to smear it around. That way we can get this ketchup nice and cooked. And get it browned up in the next 10 minutes. So it'll be ready to eat. Let's put it back in the oven 10 more minutes. Extra 10 minutes in the oven. And that's what it looks like. The top comes out nice. And, and shiny and it's ready to be plated here in a little bit because it is piping hot but I'll show you what it looks like on the plate let's get everything plated It's so moist it fell apart, but it's so good. Look at that. Oh, man. I've got some cooked cabbage to go with that. Some cooked cabbage. Baked beans. and a little broccoli salad.
homemade meatloaf. So good. Look at this. So good. And so filling. You'll love it. I added a little extra ketchup to mine. It's so moist. So delicious. So good. Mmm. Mmm. And for the cooked cabbage, the secret for awesome cooked cabbage, you put bouillon cubes in it. Chicken bouillon cubes. I had quite a bit of water in that one, but I put some two chicken bouillon cubes in it. Lots of pepper, and it makes the best cooked cabbage. But, as far as this meatloaf goes, amazing. So good. You've got to try it. I hope you've enjoyed today's video on the homemade meatloaf. So good, so comforting, and such a good meal. Not a whole lot of ingredients, but a whole lot of taste, that's for sure. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, just leave me a comment, and I will respond with an answer. Until next time, have a great week. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. And ring that bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos.